But before this bill was pro proposed, they were the ones who were, in fact, in forefront, preaching and using homophobia as an organizing tool. Pastor Warren was in Africa doing his uh, so-called uh, purpose-driven projects. He has purpose-driven projects in Nigeria. He has a purpose-driven project in Rwanda. He has the same project in Uganda. And ironically, all these countries have mentioned they have new laws against homosexuality. The, the East Friends, uh, Archbishop Akinola of Nigeria, we have uh, uh, Orombi, Henry Orombi of Uganda. These are the very people who are advocating for anti-gay laws in their countries. So you can see that they distance themselves now because the fire is burning. But they are friends in Africa, the same people who are for this uh, bill. And, and the other thing I have to point out is this, that Go ahead. we have a group of, um, of Americans, like the Institute on Religion and Democracy, aided by the... Uh, by Mark Turi currently, who is their president. This is a group which has used homophobia as an organizing tool in Africa. It has misrepresented or taken the American politics of gays and lesbians in this country and used it as a reason for them to get African on their side. And unfortunately, when the fire now is burning against LGBTI persons in Africa, these groups are silent about this bill. So we need to hold these groups accountable. And Reverend Keoma, you attended the now infamous anti-gay conference in Kampala last year. Uh, I'd like to play a, a tape uh, of a clip from one of the Americans who spoke at that conference. This is Scott Lively, who we've been mentioning, a prominent anti-gay conservative Christian activist. The gay movement is an evil institution. That's goal. The goal of the gay movement is to defeat the marriage-based society and replace it with a culture of sexual promiscuity in which there's no restrictions on sexual conduct except the principle of mutual choice. That was Scott Lively. Um, in the report uh, that you have done, Reverend Kapia Keoma, you say in the United States um, uh, the renewal groups are the problem. In the Episcopal Church, the United Methodist Church USA, the Presbyterian Church USA, U.S. conservative evangelicals, and the Institute on Religion and Democracy, the neoconservative think tank that for decades has sought to undermine, undermine Protestant denominations' tradition of progressive social justice work. Are you having members of these churches supporting your work? And I wanted to ask Frank Mugisha that question as well, um, from these very churches that are opposing those within these churches that are um, working towards this anti-gay legislation. I must say that we had an advisory board from some of these churches, like the Episcopal Church, the Methodist Church, and the Presbyterian Church, and the role they played is just to allow us to understand the politics of anti-gay politics in their churches. As to work with them directly on this uh, bill, we know that their churches have sent statements opposing the bill in, in Uganda. The presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church in America has sent a statement condemning the bill. The same thing has happened from other groups, but we don't necessarily work with them directly. What we are trying to do is to let them know that these groups of the renewal movements are doing a lot of harm outside the world using the gay politics, and what they should do is to come up with a strategy of countering this, because if they don't counter it, then the people in Africa are going to suffer the consequences. Frank Mugisha, your response, yeah, um, and can you talk about where you're traveling in the United States as you are a spokesperson for uh, sexual minorities, a uh, group uh, called Sexual Minorities Uganda? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my take on the support uh, is that um, 
we, of course, there are some religious groups that have come out and condemned this bill, but uh, I'll give you a small background of my activism in Uganda. My activism comes in because I'm a gay person in Uganda, because of the hostility we've gone through, because of the homophobia we've faced in Uganda. So we, we, we find ourselves doing this kind of work, but we don't have the research, we don't have the, the, the kind of support that the people like uh, my count, like people like uh, who fight homosexuality in Uganda have. People like Pastor Martin Semper, they have PhDs, they have, uh, they, they have strong supporters who even come down and support them from the grassroots. But I in Uganda, for, for us, the research, like the, the political research issues did, this was a tool that was one of its kind that we, we've started using at this moment. And we would like such kind of support to continue uh, happening for us. And then talking about the religious groups that support us in Uganda, people who are, are progressive and liberal to homosexuality in my country, if they come out and support us, then they are going to be labeled homosexuals themselves, which, which becomes kind of dangerous for them and their families because Uganda is very homophobia. So they come out and, and support and then they tend to shy away again. We've got people who have supported us and have been labeled homosexuals. So this kind of environment g gives us very little support. That's why Frank we Mugisha, we're going to have to leave here. it there. And That's, I thank you for being with us. Uh, the show is ending. F Frank uh, Mugisha, spokesperson for Sexual Minorities Uganda, and Reverend Kapia Keoma with the Political Research Associates. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez, our website, democracynow.org. Thank you.